Hello, welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me. To make my fake coral wall backdrop, what I've done is I've got this rather large cardboard box and I've cordoned off all the areas that I don't want any of the expanding foam to go in. So, because I've got a design that goes in the centre here, I don't want any of the foam in there, so I just use masking tape to take that all off. And I've scored the boxes to get the shape that I want. If you're going to be using this principle for a fish tank, may I suggest that you use polystyrene as a base for it. It works really, really well in fish tanks as well. But because this is just a backdrop for an outdoor shower and it's going to be covered in cement, I can use cardboard. Because this piece is going to be attached to a a fence, what I'm doing is I'm taking some plastic straws and putting them in holes where the screws are going to be attached just so that I've got vacant spaces when it comes time to screwing it onto the fence. I'm going to be using this foam fill. It's a triple expanding fill and I've got a very large can. It's a 750 milliliter can which is probably only going to do half of what I need. Now depending on whether you want very very light formed corals or if you want really deep formed corals that's determined by the amount of sand that you put on so if you want just very very light coral just put a little bit of sand on if you want some deep crevices put a lot of sand on when you're doing a large piece like this I mean, I suggest you do it on the floor because it does get quite heavy once you put all the foam and sand on it and I've put the newspaper in the centre there because I really don't want it on the floor. The other thing that I'm going to be using is this soft washed clay sand to create the formation. When you're working with expanding foam, make sure you're working in a well ventilated area and you're wearing protection clothing, gloves, masks and safety goggles. Once your foam is dry, normally it takes about five hours. You can leave it overnight if you choose, and then just tip all the sand off. I've tipped some of the sand off, and that's what you'll be left with. A rather attractive looking coral formation. I've had to do mine in two sections because I didn't have enough sand. So I did the top part first, and tip the sand off and then reuse it on the bottom part. You're going to need a lot of sand. This area is only one meter by 40 centimeters at its widest point and that has taken 25 kilos of sand. I didn't have enough to cover it completely so you're probably going to need a lot more than that. When you have a close look at it, it's got lots of little crevices and pits, indents. So it makes a perfect backdrop for fish tanks because there's lots of places for the fish to hide. But this one is for my outdoor shell. To paint my backdrop, I have got a cream biscuit colour and I've got an ivory and I've got a very very light colour grey and I'm going to be using some pouring solution to add to the paint so that it's not so thick and it goes on a little bit easier. If you'd like to see how to make pouring solution I'll leave a link in the description box below. So I've added equal quantities of paint to pouring solution so it gives you this really nice runny solution and now I'm just going to be painting that on to the indentations like that. Just try to match the colours as close as I can and then just paint the whole thing. 
do small sections at a time and have both your colors ready because the highlighting you can do afterwards because you really want to cover this really well the best that you can because when it's exposed to the sun if it's not covered it turns into like a powdery form and it just starts disintegrating so do your best covering it all for the highlights i'm concentrating more on the little valleys where they've got the extrusions to them and then just putting the white onto those From this angle it looks like I've painted everywhere so now I'm going to wait for that to dry before I stand it up into this position and then see the parts that I've actually missed. I've got all the highlights in and now it's ready for the next step which is to put the cement on the back of it. I'm using an old tablecloth I got wrecked with the floods and all I'm going to be doing is taking all my big piece and putting it on there and tracing around exactly how to cut it and then we're going to mix up some cement and dip this into the cement and then put it on. I've laid my piece onto the material and as you can see I'm leaving a little bit of a turnover so I can cover the sides of it the same at the bottom and the top and now I'm just going to trace the circle out. I'm using ivory cement and as you can see it's a really nice liquid consistency and now all I'm going to do is soak the piece of material in there until it's ready to use. Before we put the backing of the cement sheet onto the piece we've now got a cut of all the borders. I'm just going to be using a sharp knife to cut the borders off. I've got all the borders cut off and now, as you'll see on the cardboard box, there's some weak points where the cardboard box folded to make it into a box. So what I'm doing is I'm taking some two, two millimeter wire and I'm going to be just putting that on to reinforce these sections a wee bit. So I'm doing that on both sides. I'm using this bond crete and I'm mixing it 50-50 with water and I'm going to just paint it all over so that the cement will adhere to the cardboard much better. I painted it all on and I've also done the sides. Anywhere that's exposed, I paint it with the glue as well. Here comes the tricky part. To put the concrete onto the back, as you can see, all the little bulges have got different heights. Now you can try and level it on the ground or wherever you're going to be doing it. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be putting the concrete sheet onto it and then flipping it over onto some newspaper so that my piece lies level. I put the cement sheet on and I flipped it over. I'm going to finish it off at a later stage. Everything is dry now so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking the excess piece of material that's come over and lift it up and then trace around all the shapes and then cut the piece of material and then we're going to stick that to this section here. I'm just using the texture to draw the outline of the shapes of the pieces. I'm just using a sharp pair of scissors to cut out all the patterns so it's quite easy to cut the material with the scissors. I'm just going to be gluing it down with the maxi nail. I put my coral wall up now and now I'm going to take some of the ivory cement again and I'm going to be finishing off by just filling in all the gaps around and putting another coat of cement on the sides here and on the top and then another coat of cement on my centerpiece. I finished my fake coral backdrop and there it's in position standing next to my outdoor shower which I'm still working on at the moment. If you found this video helpful or you enjoyed it please give it a thumbs up. Really appreciate it if you would subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.